Howdy ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Texas Fidget Guard. My name is Jared. In this episode, it's going to be the second of a five-part series I'm doing on how to start a garden. And we'll be looking at the layout of the garden, which layout to choose. So there's really two different types of layouts for gardening. There's the traditional row gardening method, and then there's the square foot gardening method. The traditional row gardening has been around forever, and then the square foot gardening method is a lot newer method. So we're going to look at each of these and determine which of them is best suited to uh, grow the most amount of vegetables uh, efficiently in our garden. So the first type of garden we're going to talk about is called traditional row gardening. So with traditional row gardening, it's been around since gardening has been around. And in this, you're going to take your existing soil, you're going to till it up and add amendments like minerals, maybe some compost, stuff like that, and you're going to use that existing soil to grow your vegetables. Now the layout of it is usually you're going to have large walking paths, paths in between rows of vegetables and so you know for example all the uh, vegetable seeds that you buy at the store are going to have traditional row gardening um, instructions on them as far as spacing so on this package of okra it says spacing it says row is going to be three feet apart and, and the plants are going to be 18 inches apart so what they mean by that is your rows is going to be so pretend this is an okra plant each of these x's and each between each uh, row of, of okra, you're going to have three foot paths. That's what they mean, three foot paths every, uh, every row. And then it said 18 inches, 18 inches for each plant. So from one plant to the next is going to be 18 inches. So you can count it like that. So you can see we're using a lot of paths. We have a lot of path area for, for every um, actual plant. So the next type of gardening method we're going to look at is called square foot gardening. And it was actually popularized back in the 1970s by a guy named Mel Bartholomew. And I have his book, uh, I have a link for it in the description below if you want to check it out. So in his method though, he would, instead of using the existing soil, he would build a raised bed. You can either build the raised bed out of wood, concrete, plastic, whatever kind of material you want to use. And I'll be discussing that in the next episode. And so once you build that, you're going to take uh, an exi uh, exterior source of soil, either from a nursery, a big box store, something like that, and you're going to put that soil in there. So you're not using the existing soil. You don't have to amend and till and all this kind of stuff. You put that soil in there. So basically you've got this big box of soil, and as far as the layout goes, it's going to be uh, always four feet across and then however long you want to be. And the reason why it's four feet across is you can have paths on either side of this raised bed. And as you walk down there, you can actually reach over two feet. And that way you can access from either side of it, you can access all these plants in the middle. And so the reason this is so good is because you have a lot less rows uh, or pathways that you have to put in there. And so it just condenses everything, makes it more efficient, and you can grow a lot more plants on a smaller area. And so, for example, on this, once we have our box, our four, say this one is four foot by four foot, um, and we can put uh, a certain number of plants, and we break it up into square feet. And you can put a certain number of plants based upon what type of plant you're putting in there in each square foot. But for example, okra, you can put one okra plant per square foot. So if we take this four by four foot uh, box, split them into square feet, and put one okra plant in each square foot, we can uh, end up with 16 uh, okra plants within a 16 square foot area. So now that we've looked at both types of uh, gardening methods and seen what they entail, let's take an example. And the example I want to use is growing 16 plants of okra. So if we use the traditional row gardening method, I've already done ma the math for you, it's going to take 67.5 square feet to grow 16 okra plants. Now if we take the square foot gardening method, do the calculations, it's only going to take 40 square feet to grow those same 16 okra plants. So as you can tell, we're utilizing our land area a lot better than square foot gardening and we're condensing being able to grow more plants in a smaller area in square foot gardening. So that's why I choose square foot gardening over traditional row gardening because it's a lot more efficient in the land use. The other reason I use square foot gardening versus traditional row gardening is that in traditional row gardening, you, every year you've got to till up that soil and add the amendments and it's just a lot more work than if you're using the square foot gardening method and you just have to put an exterior source of dirt or soil into 
the, uh, the box you've created. So when we're using the square foot method, there's a certain number of plants you can put in each square foot based upon the type of plant it is. So the first one we have here is one plant per square foot. So you go ahead and put the one plant in the middle of that square foot. Examples are going to be tomatoes, okra, and broccoli. And this next one we have is four plants per square foot. Examples are Swiss chard and corn. So as you equally distance uh, four plants within that one square foot. Next we have uh, nine plants per square foot. And the examples of that would be green beans, beets, and spinach. So equally distance nine plants within the square foot. And then finally we have 16 plants per square foot. And examples of that are carrots and radishes. Just equally distance within that square foot. So I'll go ahead and put a list of the plants and how many plants you can put per each square foot in the description below if you want to check that out. So that's all I have for y'all today. If you found this material valuable and you liked it, go ahead and like and subscribe uh, to the channel if you would. And in the next episode, I'll be talking about how to choose the materials that make up the raised bed that we talked about earlier in the video. So until next time, God bless and have a good day.